you. Uh, so good morning, everybody, um, and thanks for uh, joining us. Hope you've all grabbed your cuppa. Um, hopefully this webinar is all about giving you some um, practical advice and tools um, to get you match fit um, and in really good shape to succeed post um, the lockdown situation that, that we're all in. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Michelle Gettins. Um, for the first time in about eight weeks, I've actually put makeup on and done my hair. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> and got out of my uh, leisure wear. Um, <laughs> I'm Head of Marketing at I Am Property and I'm joined by our lovely expert panel, uh, Jamie Cook and Charlotte Campbell. Uh, so guys, do you want to just introduce yourselves? Ladies first, Charlotte? Ladies first, indeed. Yeah, so I guess I'm Charlotte Campbell. I'm an estate agency trainer or lettings trainer these days and I'm director of The Able Agent and we offer online training courses for estate agents and we've also got a level three qualification my background is a state agency from 1994 I've worked in it, apart from a brief interlude where I decided to sell radio advertising because I thought I would have a proper job, uh, but then quite quickly got back, <laughs> looking at me blankly there, got quite quickly back into a state agency and property. So very passionate about supporting agents at these quite tricky times and uh, hopefully we'll have some good ideas for you. Hi, I'm Jamie. Um, most of you will know me. I'm the MD of I'm Sold. So um, Ben and I set up I'm Sold, which is now part of the I'm Property Group back in 2009. Um, jack of all trades, master of none. Um, but today, hopefully, we can share some tips in terms of our thoughts um, for getting back to what will become the new normal. Um, Charlotte's got some great stuff on training. Um, I'll offer a few pearls of wisdom um, and hopefully um, if you've got any questions you can shout out on the chat and we'll uh, we'll come back to you and um, hopefully help um, as best we can really get everybody match fit that's the goal of the day so um, yeah that's us thank you today, I've only been for half an hour Jamie <laughs> uh, well, yeah we'll be here as, all day <laughs> as you quite rightly said uh, in your post on LinkedIn last night, leave a little bit longer. So every time we've talked about what we're going to talk about, we've added about 14 different things. So, uh, so yeah. my biggest challenge for the day is managing the time. <laughs> it wasn't the tech, it's managing the time. Uh, so just, I guess, just as a, as a way of intro and, and getting into the content, we've, we've all been talking to a lot of agents since, since this crisis began. Um, and we're going to come at, cover some of the key questions that we've been asked and hopefully they'll resonate with you all. Um, the key is this is really about practical advice. So uh, there's loads of content out, uh, out there at the moment, which is fantastic. Um, a lot of it is about strategy and the bigger picture, um, but we're going to focus on stuff that actually you can really use and put into practice uh, mm -hmm. with your teams in a really practical way. Um, so we can get started. Just um, people, please feel free to use the chat to ask additional questions. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on that as, as we go through. Um, and if I get a chance to ask the panelists, I will. We'll ask them at the end as well if we have time. Um, but otherwise, we can come back to you af after the event. Um, so yeah, just use the chat. Um, so I guess we'll start with one of the, the biggest questions we've been asked actually, which is how do I even start with reviewing my database and pipeline? Like what opportunities should, be, should I be looking for at this point in time, given the context that we're in? So I suppose from my point of view, I think if I would be looking at the quality of the data in my database at the moment, it's mm -hmm. not a time to be actively selling, but I very much believe that we should be positioning ourselves as expert advisors for our clients. So whilst it's not just a hi, how you doing call, it's a, a, it's a professional call where we're actually putting ourselves in the position of being an expert <laughs> and offering advice. So I suppose the first thing I'd say to you is to think how good is the database that we hold at the moment? There's a great opportunity at the moment to actually go through your data, make sure it's categorized really well so that you come out of this program with a much better quality, a much better categorized database. I mean, my background, um, I was an old school estate agent. I had Rolodex boxes and a filing cabinet. And I think the CRM systems that we use nowadays Jamie's laughing, I'm that old. Um, the databases we use nowadays, they're a bit like a black hole and I'm not sure that we really get to know the clients within our database as well as we possibly could. So I'd be breaking it down into categories and I'd be looking at my data and then I'd be giving my teams tasks and that might be whether I go down through my, um, my potential applicants with the property to sell or potential um, sellers. I'd be thinking about how well do I know those? How easily can I get that data out of my database? How well is my database categorized? 
one of the things that we used to have in our business was a, a little tick box which was called a forced seller now it's not a nice thing when you look back on it because forced selling is a nice not a nice position to be in mm. but from our point of view it was a very easy way for us to gain that information out and know how to to um to speak to people but it's all the different opportunities. So it's not just those applicants for the property to sell, it's potential mortgage leads, it's potential auction leads, it's potential price reductions. Mm -hmm. So I'd be looking at each category on my database, whether that's my prospect um, um, vendors that are on my looking to buy list, it could be my previous market appraisals, it could be um, existing tenant find landlords. All of these represent different kinds of opportunities. So then I'd be pulling my data out, whether that's via the reporting system. And again, it's one of those areas that maybe now is a really good time to understand the reporting system in the, so in the database. There's a point there as well. I think if you're on the front line in a branch and you're thinking about database management, it, sometimes it feels like a bit of a chore, but I think there's a really good excuse now in that everyone's yeah. world's been turned upside down. What you recorded on your database of someone even five weeks ago, could be completely different to what their goals are now. So it gives you the perfect opportunity and it, it, it puts you out there as a real professional. The, the landscape's changed, the world outside has changed. What are your goals now? What are your objectives now? And it gives you a really solid reason to reach out to your client and, and, and the objective of being, getting that database in the, the, the most match fit position possible for, for when we're ready to get back to normal. And I think for me, it's the human element to it as well. I mean, I, I did, a, did a little article on um, LinkedIn the other day because I've been through all sorts of life changes in my life, divorce, you know, my husband lost his wife, there's all sorts of stuff. And every step of the way, I've needed to get expert advice. But if I look back at my time as a negotiator, my notes would have been divorced, relocation. You know, I literally wouldn't have really thought about the human element behind it. Mm. I think whilst we're talking database, it's not just database it's about those human connections that we can make so that so the practical tips for me would be making sure your teams are asking really good open questions that's what I do a lot of in my sales skills training so that those open questions start a really um, empathetic conversation rather than you know the old school questions that we perhaps would have used before lockdown so you know I want to understand why somebody's moving and I want to know how keen they were perhaps to move prior to, to lockdown how much has changed you know what are you concerned about at the moment and I'd be thinking about all of those sorts of questions and you know how likely are you to want to move when we come out of lockdown so all the questions I'm asking would be a little bit softer yeah. but it's the same with my landlords as well I've got a whole database of landlords who've just done ten and find now, I'm a landlord myself, and it's quite tricky at the moment. You've got, you know, tenants to negotiate in terms of whether they're paying their rent, you're trying to manage repairs and maintenance. I imagine there's a lot of landlords out there starting to think this is just a bit difficult at the moment. So, again, it's having those good questions with your landlord. So, how confident are you at the moment as a landlord? How much do you know about selective licensing in your area? How much do you know about the change to, to minimum APC standards or the change to the electrical check rules? So by having these really practical questions with your teams, I think you're in a good position to sort of give them some support to make those cost um, conversations really count. Yeah, And then absolutely. once you do that, your notes are your key. And I suppose one question I would say to you as business owners, if you are business owners out there, is look at your database and think, how proud am I of this database? You know, have I got notes? And as a trainer, quite often, I don't see enough of the real story behind the client when I look at a database. No, and I, Sean, and I can relate that to, you know, there's a lot of clients on here. Uh, a lot of uh, people on here will be, I'm so clients. And we ask, you know, that first note when someone refers a property to us, all too often we'll have vacant property was on market at. You know, we need that human element so that we can, there's a smooth handover. So it's much the same. You know, if you're collecting the right information, you've got a proper picture of, what that client needs is it's not just a label like you say divorce yeah. debt you know quick sale you need so that if anyone else picks it up in the office they understand to approach it with the right level of empathy which is a, the big thing i took out of your article um on linkedin and then obviously we can we can, we want that same level of translation whenever we take a property as a referral from one of our partners into auction so that we can pick it up with that right level of empathy and I think empathy, I mean, for any of you who's been a salesperson in life, I don't think we're salespeople as much anymore. We're advisors. 
And the only way you can really advise somebody is you really understand the situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. So those basic skills that I could deliver as a trainer are those really good questions because I would expect there to be a certain level of knowledge and expertise with people having these conversations at the moment. But going back to how good is the question that gets me started so I can offer my knowledge and expertise is really key. Um, and it's rethinking how those questions work. So, you know, how likely are you to want to move in the next few months? You know, what have you been doing during lockdown? How much work have you done to your property? You know, what's that with an agenda to, you know? And I think loads of people will be coming out of this wanting a garden or changing the way they live. So I think we're going to see fundamental changes changes in the way we operate moving forward um, no when we were sorry, sorry charlotte uh, i'm just saying I, I know when we were talking about this yesterday um you guys were talking about kind of categorization as well um is, is there something that you want to share around kind of how you categorize the opportunities within your crm Yes, I mean, there's two ways of doing it, really. I mean, most systems have some sort of hot seller or hot buyer um, route that you can go down. Um, I'm still a little bit old fashioned. I want the, uh, the negotiator I'm training to take a bit of ownership of this pipeline of opportunities that they have. Because I think the databases are great. And when you want the data, you can pull it out. But I don't care whether it's in a, a spreadsheet or on a file note or on the back of a book. These things, these people need to become real to, to the negotiators because then there's somebody they keep track of. So yes, in your system, you can get your basic categories right. Somebody is a prospect locally or not locally. Yeah. What, is, what are these opportunities? Are they hot? But again, I think as a company, you need to define what you mean by hot. And, I'm sh and I think hot seems to have gone off the boil a little bit. Not many people hey. use hot as well as, as we used to do in the olden days, you know, when we used to wind up our telephones and stuff. So all of that, I think, is really important. But I don't, I'm not afraid of having um, um, the, the pipeline of business categorised. So I want a pipeline of auction opportunities. Who could be my warm auction lead? Um, and... You know, that might be for June, it might be for September, it might not be today. And I think we're quite guilty as agents of being short term in our view with our pipeline. What can I convert now? But actually, we need to think a little bit further ahead of what might I be converting next month, the month after, and making that sort of stand out of your database. Yeah, I mean, it's um, interesting. You, you talked about the landlord bit earlier on. Are they comfortable being a landlord now? And you might have some people who are on the fence. You know, you need to diarise that for a month or two down the line. Has that settled? Are you comfortable again? Or are you now at reaching a decision where you don't want to be that landlord anymore? You know, is that then a sale opportunity? Is that then an auction opportunity? It, it, it's, it's, it's creating that pipeline for yourself for the future, which is I think, what, you're, what you're getting at. Absolutely. So I suppose from my point of view, you know, the sort of questions I've been asking along that line is how are you finding life as a landlord? How much do you know about all the legislation changes that are coming soon? So that you're asking those questions and then your team should be in a position to be expert to offer the advice to solve that problem. So we know that 1st of July, we're going to have minimum electrical um, checks every five years, electrical checks every five years. So what are we doing to prepare for that now? And are we the agents as an expert in this time when people are at home? having those really good quality conversations because I keep seeing articles where people say just ring them up and check how they're doing I don't think that's enough I think we should be ringing them up and giving the person on the other end of phone value of our expertise and knowledge Absolutely. and making sure that we demonstrate ourselves in that position yeah so, you know, how are you finding life as a landlord how likely are you to buy a property in the next few months how far have you got with sorting out your finance for any properties in the future and um, how far have you got with getting your property on the market when do you need to move by all these sorts of open questions i'd be thinking about making sure my teams have them um, and think about your own open questions as well and maybe set a few for your teams that you think that are valuable um, and give them the chance to have those skills where they can overcome objections and solve problems if somebody wasn't be on, doesn't want to be on the mailing list. Let's think ahead about what, what knowledge we can get them to, to demonstrate and use. Yeah, I think it's, Jimmy, about, it's the next steps for that. So, you know, you're asking the open questions, but it's having enough product knowledge or knowing where you're directing that person to if it's product knowledge outside your um, area of expertise. So auction, mm -hmm. mortgage lettings yeah. department you know it's having enough to be able to give them that advice that's professional so they're seeing you as a value add and then um having the right steps which would be different to every business mm -hmm. on how you then move that forward into an opportunity in a sense absolutely that's great um i think i think that was certainly really useful really interesting f for me um i think it 
kind of talking about kind of getting to know your vendors and, and having those conversations and asking those questions. Um, obviously, we a lot of our agents have, have in the context of, have been asking us, like, what should I say to my existing vendors that are considering a withdrawal? Um, have you got anything don't, in addition to add it. to that circumstance? <laughs> do it if you want to. <laughs> I, think, I think the key point there with what we're saying is we need to find out why. why? I mean, why? the why is the most important bit. So again, you know, it's thinking about, it's the human element again. Is it just that they don't want to put it on the market or they want to withdraw because they're worried about somebody coming into their home? That's yeah. perfectly reasonable. So we need to find out if that's the case. So, you know, it's a, an open question, like tell me a little bit about what, you, what are you concerned about? That could open up all sorts of, um, of queries. I'm worried about my house price dropping. I'm worried that I can't find what I want because there's nothing for sale. I'm worried about getting infected with COVID-19 or whatever. And then another question, so how urgent was your move prior to lockdown and what's changed? So this, this understanding what's changed, I think, will then give you the opportunity to then solve those problems where you can. Um, and you might, you might want to ask things, you know, what have you discovered about your home whilst you've been living in it, you know, so intensely, you know, this information. I don't, like, I don't like my children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fill out children, want a garden, yeah. <laughs> my husband's building a shed. <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a bad idea to invite my mother to stay during lockdown. That's what I've discovered. Um, um, no, I they're really that one, but I've, got, I've got five kids, so, you know, I don't know who trumps there. <laughs> yeah, no, you win, definitely. Um, no, I think they're all, all massively important points. It comes back to the why. Why? Why? What, what is the change? What is the reason that, that you, you know, you, you came on the market for a reason? You've got to understand that because it's not withdrawal always feels like a lost opportunity. Um, but actually, it's a massive opportunity for you because, you know, you've got other disciplines within your business. Most people on the call will have access to their own rental team, their own auction team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, was the original marketing strategy correct? Um, is it correct now? Can we talk about another option? Is rental perhaps an option? So if you're concerned about drop in value, um, which some people will be, and that's their personal perception because no one's got a crystal ball to see what's going to happen come come the other side of this. But, you know, could you turn into a potential withdrawal into a, a fully managed rental property that you can then, the client retains the asset, they create an income, um, and then you can agree a timeline of contact with them that says, how about we keep in the loop every six, eight weeks and establish if now's the time, you know, because everybody's circumstances are likely to change we're all in a very different dynamic now. No one really knows what the future looks like. We're all desperate to get back to normality, but there's going to obviously be phases as we reach, as, as we work through to get to normality. And um, of course, from my perspective, a potential withdrawal is obviously an auction instruction, um, a potential for an auction instruction. So, you know, if it's the fact that they've lost time, um, perhaps they want to try something new with their speed and security associated to it. Um, and it's about, I think, for you being seen as a property professional and given, you know, understanding the why, being really human, being empathetic, and then discussing the range of options. But the final option might be they just want to batten down the hatch. You know, they're scared of what's to come because they don't like the unknown. You know, there is a huge proportion of the, of the population is going to be like that. So if withdrawal is the strategy... If you're going to withdraw, are you in the best position from a mortgage perspective? Can I get my mortgage advisor to speak to you? Because if you're going to batten down the hatches for two years, mortgage deals are probably going to be in the best position they've ever been for a very long time due to the interest rate as you know a, a record low. Let me get my mortgage advisor to talk to you because if you're going to batten down the hatches, let's get you in the best possible position. And then again, I'll agree a contact strategy with you. So. Don't see it as a lost opportunity. See it as an opportunity for you to be the professional that gives the advice. Um, and ultimately, again, it retains an opportunity for revenue for the business, which um, is obviously of utmost importance for this next period. I think that's a great shout, Jamie. Um, are any property sales still moving right now? Yeah, it's a contentious one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you've seen probably in three I apparently someone got arrested for doing a viewing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we're still selling, um, but we're focusing on areas of the business where where it's safe to do so. So um, at any one point in time, we've got about 1,600 properties available for sale and three or 400 in the back background getting all the documents ready, et cetera. Um, so we're selling vacant stock. We're selling investment stock. Uh, we sold uh, selling land. We sold a plot of land that we listed in lockdown. 
um, uh, for 100 grand and uh, it sold for 301. I mean, an unbelievable achievement for the vendor. The buyer was over the moon because they got a plot of land exactly where they wanted to be. But the whole process was social distance approved, uh, as it were, for want of a better phrase, uh, listed in lockdown, using technology, packs produced, uh, closed in an online auction, two local buyers uh, bid it up from 100 to 301. So, I mean, that's probably the best example that we've had in terms of maximizing value. Um, but we've had a number of investors buying on streets where they've got property. Um, they know it. They know the property type. Um, and their money's better in a property that's given them a, a return than it is in the bank. Um, but, you know, so yes, we are still selling. In terms of normal levels, I suppose it's probably minuscule. Um, but there are deals being done all across the UK, um, and that's going to rise. You know, um, we see in the trade press that you know people are using technology to their advantage from a, um, uh, a video tours, etc. I think everyone probably needs to really take a good look at that because one of you mentioned that uh, I think Charlotte people might not want people in their home, so. Um, I, I, I think there'll be a big chunk of people that, you know, would you want 20 people traipsing through your house on an open day? Um, maybe the new world looks like using technology to send in the video, to get them interested, to get them to the point where they're uh, mortgage approved. Um, all the relevant checks have been done uh, in terms of um, AML, etc. And once they're at a point where they're maybe even negotiating an offer, then they can go and view. There will be people that want that, that, in, in the new world so um yes we're still selling a lot less than normal focusing on what we you know we normally um we normally do in the vacant space and the investment space um and i think that will be quite a bit of bread and butter for for a lot of the people on the call and our network over the course of the next period that's great um now obviously a lot of, a lot of businesses um and and i know we we've got quite a lot of staff on furlough as well at the moment and um you, you're obviously allowed to train those staff which is brilliant um I, I guess we've been um we've been asked by quite a lot of agents in terms of what what should i prioritize for them um while they're on furlough what what would benefit the business and and them personally the most charlotte have you got any yeah. views on that yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just that. How long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> I think from, from my point of view, it's um, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. You know, there's a lot of practical skills that you can give your teams at the moment. So uh, it's, but first, I think you've got to start with what do you know about your staff and what do they know and what they don't know? Because it's a really good opportunity at the moment to really assess the skill set of your teams. So we've put together something called a skill scan and it's a list of all the topics that you would expect to understand as an estate or letting agent. And it allows you to, to, to look at that and say, am I an expert? Am I lacking a bit of confidence? Am I completely cl clueless? Where am I? And I think something like that is a tool that's really useful at the moment because I think we're talking a lot about training at the moment during furlough, which is brilliant, but we can't be just talking about it for now. There needs to be almost a lead in for it, for it to be something for the future as well. I, mean, I know I would say that I'm a trainer, but it's true. I think it gives agents a really good opportunity to plan their training moving forward. There's going to be a real mixture, I think, with, with, with staff. I think some of them are going to feel really supported during lockdown and some of them are going to be really concerned about their employer. Are they comfortable where they're working? Are they thinking about changing? So anything that you can do to invest in that staff member, even if that's just time, it doesn't have to be money, is, will help stand you in good stead in the future. So I think my first step would be make sure you do a skills check. However you do that, whether that's an ongoing webinar, a webinar with your team or a Zoom call with your team and you say, let's iron out what you're concerned about at the moment. How confident are you in the consumer laws? How confident are you in overcoming objections? Whatever that may be. And then you can put together a, a plan for them. And then looking at the training from a job role specific point of view, but also it has to be about the individual as well. So thinking about um, your business, what are your minimum standards for these sorts of things? So have you got a minimum standard for loading data onto your database? What do you expect? I mean, as a manager, I would absolutely have expected the story in the notes section about the client. So I would be monitoring that, but I, you can't monitor something and set a target without giving people training to achieve it. So what are my minimum standards I'm looking to achieve with my database, with my hot calling? How confident are your teams picking up the phone and ringing about properties? How confident are they with vendor contacts? 
are you getting the most out of business opportunities or are they just admin calls? So um, making um, a plan to understand what people don't know and what you want as a minimum standard as a business, I think is, is key. Um, and thinking about these, you know, your targets, you know, how many mortgage opportunities are missed? You know, how many times do you speak to a new person over the course of a week and, and, and compare that to the amount of mortgage leads achieved? I would say there's probably a very big gap between that. So what's the skills gap in your staff member being comfortable overcoming objections for mortgage? So I think do the skills scan, understand what people know or don't know. And then you can think about what you need to do to fill in those gaps ultimately. And I, it goes back to what I said at the beginning is let's get everyone working with a pipeline of business. So if I've got in my back pocket five warm, warm auction leads and my boss rings me up and says, you're, you're behind on your auction target this month, rather than going into the black hole of my database, I go to my back pocket and think, well, there's five I've been speaking to regularly. Which ones of those are likely to convert quickly? The same with landlords, you know, moving up to, uh, to property management. Who am I been talking to for a while? Who might I be able to convert? And I'm a big believer in work smart, not hard, you know, think about your data, use your clients. So where are your gaps with your team in working like that? And can you, you know, monitor them in terms of the business that they've got? Um, and look at all the different opportunities that you have for them, basically, and then put your plan into place for training. Yeah, that's great. And um, I know that you've, you've kind of, we've been talking about Charlotte's top five training suggestions <laughs> yeah. um, over the last few weeks. Uh, would you like to share those, Charlotte? Yeah, so I suppose for me, once you've identified your gaps, you've got various options, haven't you? So you've got DIY training, and that's great. You know, most agents would do a lot of DIY training themselves. So that could be sitting down the new starter with Nelly. But you need to have a structure to that, even if it is just sit with Nelly. So the first one would be, what are these, um, these concerns that you have? Think about your minimum standard. What are the questions that you might ask to gather the information to solve that problem to make sure you've got detailed notes? So then you might struck in, strike a, um, planning some Zoom calls, but you have to plan it. Training doesn't happen by magic. You have to think about what you want to achieve from it. And small bite-sized chunks tend to work a lot better than sort of forcing people to read a load of paperwork or sign up for hours on end. So keep it simple. So you might set one session that would be um, overcoming objections to being on the mailing list. And you might think of some good skills. You might set one up that would be overcoming objections to auction. Why wouldn't somebody consider auction? And then you could get your team to think about, well, what are the benefits of auction? Why is that useful? And training should be interactive. So get them giving you ideas rather than it all coming from you as the manager to them as well. So DIY yeah. is, is the first one. Um, the second are all the tools that we're seeing at the moment, loads of, loads of webinars. I mean, this is a great training tool. You know, you can use this as some practical tips that could go out to the teams. All the membership bodies are doing various webinars, whether that's Property Mark or the Guild. There's loads of really useful content out there. Um, and sometimes as business owners, I think we keep all the good information to ourselves. So it's making sure we share that and making sure that we get, make sure our teams are aware to, where to go. Podcasts. You know, I mean, we all know um, Whaley and, you know, his particular brand of comedy um, podcast, but there's really good knowledge in there, you know. You'll learn, you'll learn some life lessons in that one. Life lessons. <laughs> Not ones that we all need. Well, yeah, what not but, to do. <laughs> but there's that and there's the World Agency podcast, there's the Kerfuffle podcast. Um, so all of these things are really good tools, but be careful because you, you have to trust the source of training as well because you don't want to go down the route of following something and it's not accurate. Um, the government website's brilliant as well in terms of finding out about new laws. And it is a bit more legal jargon, but they tend to have some handy how-to guides alongside as well. So that tends to work well. Um, qualifications would be another thing I'd be thinking about at the moment. So, you know, is there a tool at the moment where I can give my team something to start studying for maybe longer term? So have we got um, a plan? Because if I can hand over my training to a qualification program, then that makes my life a bit easier as a business owner um, and trusting what that content is and knowing that content in will help. And then, of course, there's something like um, our online learning. I mean, you know, we, we, we run an online training platform. The whole point of that is that you can solve those problems quite quickly. So you can pick and mix the content you need. We've got modules that might be housing act so if you've got a sales negotiator who sometimes deals with lettings how well do they understand landlords obligations and how well can they have that conversation so that's really useful stuff to train them in and your skill scan will spot those gaps and, and then you can decide how you fill them 
So those are sort of the, the key areas. But I think with Ropa, we don't know whether it's going to happen. We still don't know what, what, you know, what the agenda is. My gut reaction is it will come. It's coming. Has, it's got to come. appetite for it. Yeah. Um, so are you thinking now about getting those team, you know, kill two birds, one stone, get them supported in terms of the qualification? And then you're sort of match fit, ready for any regulation that comes in as well. There's an interesting, um, there's an interesting point, Charlotte. There's probably some people on this call who are thinking, right, I haven't really done a great deal of training with my people who are out on furlough. And my advice on that would be don't panic because yeah. we actually haven't done a lot. So we've got 210 people in our business on full-time employment and we haven't done a lot yet. Specifically, we wanted to build it into our return to work strategy so that, you know, if you're off on furlough, you're off, you know, take the time, enjoy it. We're probably never going to get this environment again, ever, hopefully yeah. fingers crossed. But that's, you know, that it's starting to integrate training in the weeks in the build up to return, I think is massively important because it's getting them back into the habit and, and it's closer to the point where they can start to put it into practice because you'll know over the years that if you train someone and you don't use it, then it very quickly can get lost. It's got to become habit. Um, so I think if you're on the call and you're a bit concerned that you've done nothing, I wouldn't be bought, I wouldn't be worried one bit. I think now is the time to start thinking about it. Hopefully we're going to get some advice um, from the government tonight at five o'clock. Um, Boris is back on the on the um, on the rostrum in terms of the beginnings of a plan back. Mm. Um, so I think that's a really important point. Don't panic. Now is the time. Look internally. And you know, one of the points I was thinking, as you were saying, from a DIY perspective. You know, you'll have people in the business who are good at certain things. Can they help others? You'll have, you know, mortgage advisors. They will have, uh, they, they could happily spend some time working with your existing team on specifics for mortgages in your business. Auctions, you know, we'll happily do bespoke furlough-based training to uh, guys who are out at home. You know, we'll happily do that for you. You just need to reach out and ask um, at the right time that works for you. And that can be focused on, um guys who just need a, a, you know, a blanket refresher or more specific things. You know, some people might have seen our, our, our timeline marketing strategy that we've been working on. There's things that we can do to help in different pockets because different people, much like you say, the skills gap will have different needs. Mm -hmm. And I think it is taking the time now to plan because oh, there's so many different resources available, but unless, but there's no point just checking that at everybody. Because, you know, then people get overwhelmed and they don't do it. I think it's making that into bite-sized chunks, thinking about what is our agenda. And it goes back to what I said at the beginning. How proud are we of, of our database? And yeah. if we looked at our database and thought, hmm, you know, we've only got one telephone number here and there. We're missing email addresses. We've got no notes. We've got no real understanding of our clients. Surely that's an opportunity to A, train and B, monitor. And monitoring yeah. is the other thing that's so important. One of the things I forgot to mention when we were talking about databases earlier is the RAG status idea that I think is really, really beneficial now for all vendors on market or all vendors that were due to come to market. It's just understanding uh, and building your own RAG status, red, amber, green. So mm -hmm. for me, red would be you need to sell. You need to sell quickly. You needed to sell when you came to the market due to financial position or a relocation or whatever. There's 100 drivers that make, make it essential to sell. So understand what they need and focus your efforts on them because that will be different to Amber because in my view, Amber is probably, you're all right now, but if you're not sold in three months, six months, it might vary from area to area, then it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. They're going to need a different management relationship and a different approach and a different strategy and different advice. And then you've got a green, which is they're the, probably the, the discretionary sellers. They're testing the market when they came on. They're not quite sure where they want to buy or what they want to buy and they're in no financial constraint to sell quickly. Mm -hmm. Then again, you're going to have a different workflow for them um, and different outcomes and actions. And, and, and it'll help in lots of ways because if you've got a big stock register like many people on the call will have, you know where to focus your efforts. If you're in the green camp, you don't need a phone call from me every week. You know, you, you need, a, you need a, me to touch base and let you know that we're still here and you know, has anything changed in your circumstances since the last time we spoke? but you can then prep and prepare, you know, perhaps the red ones, you need to get video content um, filmed mm -hmm. for the property. Is that feasible? Can you get that? Can you arrange a date for that to happen? Can they do some filming work for you so that you can edit it and have it readily available to send to applicants? Maybe a little bit of that might bleed into Amber. So certainly if you haven't started thinking about that, um, I think it's, it's probably quite critical that you do um, and, and, and have clear buckets of, of plans of attack for each of those areas. And, and the red, amber, green status will vary from business to business and areas to area, but 
just a point I felt was beneficial that we missed off mm-hmm. earlier. And that yeah, could apply to anything, can't it? That could apply oh, to everything. the mortgage yeah, business, everything. Letting yeah. the whole world. Applicants, yeah. landlords, it's create your own statuses that work for you and know what, know what your actions and outcomes will be if you believe they fall into those buckets. Now, massive opportunity in the red in vendors if you need to sell quickly. Hello, you know, uh, 56 days to uh, exchange a complete false rate of less than 5%. These are the facts that we know. And uh, hopefully most of the people on the call know them off by heart. But if they don't, perhaps you fall in the refresher training camp so you can hit the ground running when you're, when you're, when you're back in, uh, in the world of normal. Whenever that may be. Well, it's funny, yeah, coming (laughs) coming on to that. So, I mean, obviously, um, it's really hard to plan at a time like this. There's lots of ambiguity. Um, We're really relying on clarity from the government in terms of when when the current situation will end and we'll enter into a new phase of normal. But I think um, from a human perspective, everyone always feels more comfortable when when, when they are planning ahead and they kind of can see um, the future and and how they're going to respond to to certain situations depending on how they move. Um, I know, Jamie, it's something we've been starting to talk about um, in I'm Property and I'm Sold. So have you got any advice for people in terms of how do I even start to think about returning to work and the new new normal um that we're probably about about hopefully about to to kind of enter into yeah i mean we've we've we're we're running two timeline thought processes in terms of when we think we're going to be back and we're looking at operating practices we're looking at office layouts um you know charlotte and i joked about this yesterday between us we've probably been in five thousand statuses <laughs> branches around the uk and all too often we see two brand two negotiators as you come in sat side by side are they two meters apart do they need mm-hmm. to be do, they need, do you need to look at your layout so that you can get optimum um, headcount in the office? But then that's a different thought altogether. I was a non-believer of working from home. Mm-hmm. Categorically, I just thought it was um, people taking the mickey and shout, shout at me for that because she's worked from home for, what, a decade? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's totally opened my eyes. Um, are you as a business owner in a business now going to have a strategy that supports a mix of home working and office-based? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's certainly something that we're looking at, a rota based system. Firstly, are you comfortable at home? Do you ha- are you happy? Do you like it? Do you want to come in and hot desk a couple of days? Um, so then you've got to think about the different job roles in the business um, and their phased return, as it were, because you've got to think about managing your pipeline. You've got to think about getting out and doing what you need to do. Are viewing is going to be available? So do you need your viewing staff in? Can someone else cover that? Um, there's, there's huge elements, um, but there's also... The, the, the pound notes perspective so furlough lasts until the end of june um can you when can you afford to start bringing people back um scary thing about a lot of your staff and childcare. i am desperate to hear that schools will be returned but i'm working on my in my own mind that the kids won't be going back until september i think that's yeah. not plan a we've seen that in other countries in europe they've confirmed that already so how are your staff going to cope with childcare arrangements? So starting to have all of these individual conversations now to understand what the new normal will look like from a capacity perspective, what the new normal will look like in terms of operating um, procedures. Are you implementing a, a, a new thought around valuations, a new thought around viewings? Um, there's, there's just so much to think about. And I think now is the time to start that process. Um, and I think as well, Jamie, it's about what, because it still has to be a business yeah. generating environment, doesn't it? You know, we've got to be thinking about, you know, we, we, we are salespeople, that's our role. So how are you going to have that? How are you going to be able to mm-hmm. monitor that? How are you monitoring the tempo that your team work at? And I think you've got to allow your team to be flexible in the hours that they work, particularly. Massively. But I think you have to be very rigid in what you want them to achieve in that time. So I think this is a really good opportunity to think about how are you going to monitor? Is that going to be a number of outbound calls made? Is it going to be results driven? Is it going to be, um, you know, regular meetings and updates? I don't know. And that's, that's what I think what, that's really important <coughs> to think about now. But monitoring, um, particularly in sales, as we know, is, is the key. Well, I mean, you know me, we monitor and measure and measure and monitor and monitor and review and do it again and again and again. And we've got that ability in our infrastructure and our technology because of the way we were set up. So it's so fortunate that we were very quickly able to move to um, home based working, you know, yeah. like 10 days before the lockdown. But because we can measure productivity and actually some of our longest standing members of staff who deliver month in, month out saw significant uplift in their mm-hmm. productivity. You know, you're not commuting, you're at your desk earlier, you're happy, you maybe take a little bit longer at lunch, you maybe take a little, little, you know, put the washing on, 
um, yeah. you know, start, start dinner a little bit earlier. But on the flip do you, side, do you put the washing on, Jamie? Um, <laughs> I previously, <laughs> me- previously mentioned that my mother is in the building. I haven't touched the washing machine for six weeks. Normally, I am very mm. active on household chores. I'll have you know, Miss Campbell. <laughs> um, but, you know, what were rules and responsibilities pre-COVID mm-hmm. may well change. And we may start to have looking at blended rules within each of our offices and each of our divisions and departments and whatever it may be. And I think that's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Really exciting. Um, We've done, we've, we've, you know, I've been as productive than I have been previously. Granted, I would like some human interaction that's not my wife, my mother, or my children. Um, but, you know, we're doing what we're doing to protect the NHS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think there is a real fan out of businesses and say, was it right? What's the right strategy now in terms of uh, in the office, out of the office, blending rules a little bit, um, and 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 becoming a different business, becoming a different um, setup altogether? Mm-hmm. You know, are we all going to go back and wear suits and ties? I don't really want to do that. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's. Just I definitely want to go back to the hairdressers, though. I'll just float that out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm with yeah you. that's that's a given. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's so much to think about. Um, it, it, it's, it's quite baffling, but, um, I think if you're, if, if you're a business owner, you got to start thinking about it from a cash flow perspective, first and foremost, and then off the back of that work, your phased return. Um, but really have a look at that childcare scenario, that home working scenario, those working hours. Um, yep. and, mm-hmm. and we always say people and safety first, don't we, Jamie? Absolutely. I mean, that's been our most, it's been the core of what we do. I mean, we've got 210 people in our group, um, 190 across two different offices in Newcastle um, and guys based um, all around the UK. And it's priority is their safety first, but we've got to really look at people's yeah. safety, business continuity um, and, and getting back to, you know, profitability and, 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 and growth and all of the exciting things that we all want because we're all in this business for a reason. Absolutely. Um, I'm actually amazed. We're actually spot on time. Hey. So I think I've done an amazing job there, guys. Thanks. <laughs> well done, Michelle. <laughs> I would imagine uh, it's a bit like herding cats. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, so, yeah, we're coming up to um, 11.43. So we, we said it was a 45-minute webinar. Um, I think we've, we've covered most of the questions that we know were top of mind for, for quite a lot of the agents that we've spoken to. And um, as I said at the start, I hope that's resonated with a lot of people that have joined us this morning. Um, any closing thoughts from, from you guys? Jamie, do you, do you want to go first? They always go pick on me first. Yeah, Sorry. um there's a, there's, a, there's a lot to do in this time uh, to take advantage and, and, and look at your business and, 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 and what you want it to look like on the other side of this. So um, you know, at the end of the day, people will still need to buy and sell property, to rent property, and uh, that will continue. Uh, I don't think it's going to continue in the same vein that it was. But I think that for me is quite exciting. I'm quite excited about the world, what, you know, how we've all adapted in our business and, and our partners and suppliers that we're speaking with and as an industry, it's an opportunity to recreate a little bit, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Charlotte? Yes, no, I agree. I think, I think it's, we've never had this time to really sort of microanalyze everything about business. And it, I think it's taking the time to really look at what you want the business to come out as. And I think the human element is super, super important. And I think the data is super important. And if you can get those two things right, I think you're on a, you've got a huge opportunity when this ends. And, uh, and that's just to be a supporting agent to your, your clients. You know? And I think I really do believe that we should be that professional expert at the moment, not just a, a friend. Um, I think that's really important. And I think if anyone wants any help with anything like the, you know, the training skills scan or needs like that, feel free to drop me an email. Yeah, um, I'm, you're not going to, but I'm going to. If you haven't looked at Able Agent and the software and the systems that these guys have created, look at it. It is a seriously cool bit of kit. Um, and it will, you know, when, when Charlotte was talking about training and upskilling people, it's there. It's a, there's a fountain of information that you can use to get match fit, get your people re-engaging with the idea of work, and com- some of them might not touch the computer or, or, or you know, had that mindset for a couple of weeks. It's a useful tool to get them back into it and thinking about 
all the exciting things we've discussed today to get you ready to, to take advantage and, and get back to normal. Yeah, and I, I think I think it has never been a truer word. We are in this together, and I think what I've noticed about about this industry is how everyone is pulling together, and um, there's loads of content there offering advice, and people want to help, um, and 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 I think that's there's we want to help so um, if, if there is any questions um, that you'd like um, further help with Charlotte's available get in touch directly with her with Jamie with me um, anything else that you would find useful or I'm more than happy to kind of jump on another webinar and um, hopefully share some more advice that's really pertinent and useful um, yeah, um, just for me as well on the furlough training if anyone's looking to take advantage of that just drop me an email personally um, or email or reach out to any of the guys that you're dealing with because I think it's a great opportunity just to get people refreshed because you know I don't really I didn't really want to talk a lot about it but the reality of it is I think our core key messages within auction are going to be relevant to a lot more people and I did a video a couple of weeks ago about getting time back if people have lost X amount of weeks due to, um, to to the lockdown, we can prep them, get them ready, so that when we lift them, we're able to view again, we can put it into a quick sale scenario and secure the transaction. And actually, the time that they've lost, we'll get them back and get them on and moving forward with their plans. Absolutely. And we have been uh, we, we have been putting you on camera every week, Jamie, uh, with some yeah. bite-sized training for any I Am Sold partners. So if there's anything that you'd like to hear Jamie talking about, um, drop me a line um, and we can, we can get that sorted out. Um, My think... wife's available for haircuts as well, by the way. It's quite, you see this little gap that's just missing here. I wouldn't recommend. You should do roots. <laughs> You'll have some bleach under the sink, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that the toothbrush. Yeah. Uh, no questions, Michelle. And no, no questions, which which is great. Hopefully that means that the questions that we've we've been posing are are, are top of mind. Mm -hmm. Um so I think that's it from us. Um, thanks to you both. I, I've certainly found that really, really interesting and useful. Um, thanks for your time. Thanks to everybody that's joined us. It's really, really appreciated. Um, and like I said, hopefully you've got some practical tips um, to help you kind of think about getting match fit and, and being in the best position possible to succeed um, as we move out of this lockdown period. So uh, stay safe. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, and as Jay Jamie would, would always say, keep washing those hands, everybody. Yes, it's my, it's my COVID tagline. It is indeed. Uh, thanks, everybody. Bye. Right, bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye. Bye. bye.